The Durian Heat, bringing big ideas and critical opinions in Southeast Asia. Welcome back to The Durian Heat, where we discuss critical issues in Southeast Asia. In the third segment, today we will be continuing our discussion on human rights at the crossroad with R.P. Santiago, Executive Director of the Antonio Human Rights Center in the Philippines. In this segment, he will be discussing the way forward at addressing human rights in Southeast Asia by looking back at history of people's power and dictatorship. Well, RP, thank you so much for your insight and sharing your experiences and thoughts regarding the human rights in the Philippines. But you also work for the human rights regarding the ASEAN as well. But could you briefly explain about because there are quite a number of uh, human rights issues uh, in the ASEAN. And then would you like to uh, share with us? Yes. Uh, in we, We've been... Uh, working on this issue since uh, 1996 mm-hmm. and uh, what we've been doing uh, when I say we uh, it's the working group for an SE and human rights mechanism yep uh, we, we have been uh, meeting with the foreign ministers uh, and uh, with the foreign ministries to establish um, institutions and mechanisms to address human rights in ASEAN Human rights uh, internationally is always seen as a political issue. Mm, um, I see. Unfortunately, that's that's always the case. That's why we have to deal with the foreign ministries. I see. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. at, at yes, at, at present we have two mechanisms: the ASEAN Intergovernmental Commission on Human Rights, or ICER, and the ASEAN Commission on the Promotion and Protection of Rights of Women and Children, or ACWC. The model for these uh, regional or sub-regional, in our case, human rights mechanisms is something similar to what are existing in Europe, which is the European Court of Human Rights, in uh, the Inter-Americas, which is an uh, Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, and there is also an Inter-American Court of Human Rights, and in Africa, we has an African Commission and a separate Court of Human Rights. The main difference of what we have now in ASEAN and what exists in other regions Mm -hmm. is that ours is not an independent commission. The representatives of these two commissions are government representatives, Mm -hmm. meaning they are not there to give their impartial Mm -hmm. assessment but they are also there representing their respective governments. So this also has been an issue on how how do we address uh, regional human rights challenges. Uh, I'll I'll take one of the more controversial issues. Mm -hmm. Um, The disappearance of uh, Sompath in Lao. Of course, Lao, the Lao government would uh, deny that uh, Sompath was disappeared. But how ha- ha- how should this be addressed regionally? Mm. I think regionally it must be um, recognized by ASEAN that the, the disappearance in Sompath is not an isolated event in Lao. Many disappearances have happened mm-hmm. all over the region. Mm-hmm. It happens in Indonesia, uh, in the Philippines, mm-hmm in Thailand and uh, these are seen as the more democratic countries Mm -hmm. so I I guess in the less democratic ones issues of adverse disappearances I I think it would be safe to assume also happen Mm -hmm. so from that perspective alone you you don't need to zero in if ASEAN is uh, if Lao for example is quite sensitive then ASEAN, the uh, ASEAN Commission on Human Rights need not to z- need not zero in on one particular case, but could look for a regional strategy yes. on how to address enforced disappearances within the region. So y- you don't look at a particular country, you don't condemn a particular country, but you look for solutions in order to help 
these countries in addressing these issues. And helping these countries mean that you are also helping the people to prevent the happening of enforced or involuntary disappearances. And you are also helping the victims to look for, uh, to help them in their pursuit of justice and accountability for these wrongdoings. So talking about the moving forward and the bring up the awareness, um, how what do you, what's your view that you know how we can we as in ASEAN members as well as uh, perhaps the civils uh, from Philippines can create a greater awareness among um, regarding the the human rights issues. Because of course there are institutions and uh, um, there are the governments they have um, actually uh, took into the action uh, regarding the, all these issues, uh, especially natural disaster and so on. But then what are the other ways that we can uh, actually create greater awareness among civil society? Uh, I think for civil society, um, there is a real need right now uh, for more vigilance and for civil society to be more aggressive in empowering uh, many sectors and vulnerable groups uh, all over the region. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, like, like, for example, I'll uh, take three countries uh, just to highlight okay. how in the Philippines, um, I talked about the People Power Revolution earlier, mm-hmm. um, how civil society was able to uh, help mass up this this force in order to drive away the president. Mm-hmm. Um, this has also led similarly to the reformasi in Indonesia. Mm-hmm. And uh, in uh, Myanmar, even if it was not successful in overthrowing a government uh, a, a few years back, when yep. they tried to revolt, mm-hmm. uh, you, you could see that the, the Myanmar government has reacted positively in terms of uh, changing or democratizing um, actually faster than uh, many other of the uh, hardline ASEAN countries. So it, it has a positive effect in terms of uh, reforming the government. Um, uh, there are there were challenges would uh, uh, never cease, but um, I think human rights education mm-hmm. should be further strengthened and continued. Um, sure. Yes, um, it might sound as a motherhood statement, but <laughs> indeed only when only when there is proper. Uh, awareness of what our rights mm-hmm. would there be empowerment uh, yeah. among the people and uh, if, if this um, awareness raising is also not institutionalized mm-hmm. by the government yeah. um, then government control would always be uh, uh, would always be paramount so this is when civil society needs to step in. Mm. Uh, civil society as the balancing power. And uh, I, I, again, um, I would further highlight the uh, the great influence of media in echoing this mm. as the fourth estate. It is actually media which is very instrumental in uh, multiplying what many civil society are doing yes. by only by highlighting mm-hmm. uh, what is happening in maybe areas which are not being seen mm-hmm. uh, by the mainstream mm-hmm. then uh, only can they learn of uh, these issues if it is highlighted by media mm-hmm. and right now uh, with the age of the internet with the age of technology um, it's much faster it's much easier to bring this message and the more people get access to those um, the internet um, access that's correct yeah. um, in fact internationally there has already been a debate mm-hmm. whether internet is also a human right if there is a right to the internet <laughs> I mean, that's how that's how fast paced sure, issues yes. are now mm-hmm. uh, going in other parts of the world 
but again here in our small pocket here in our ASEAN region mm-hmm. um, our issues are still more of the basic issues that have uh, pestered the, some of the European countries mm-hmm. before and uh, many of these issues actually still beset, beset yeah. some of these uh, European countries uh, inter-American countries but uh, I, I think in our part of the region we should also learn from uh, our regional neighbors on how they are able to address uh, yep. how they are able to uh, better protect mm. the human rights of the people mm. all right well thank you so much uh, rp uh, for sharing all this uh, very depth and your insight uh, regarding the human rights and we hope to uh, have another um, conduct another interview in the future regarding human rights or even even other areas um, regarding ASEAN and thank you so much for the interview thank you okay thank you very much uh, okay. Gauri and Greece thank you and thank you to Arlene for setting this up as well for sure all it right. was my pleasure to be your guest this okay. morning Thank you very much. That's all from the Durian Heat. Thanks for tuning in to Durian ASEAN. For more interviews, please go to our website at durianasean.com. If you're on the go, you can always download our tuning app on your mobile. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels at Durian ASEAN and Durian ASEAN TV. Don't forget to follow us on our Facebook page, Twitter and Instagram. We always welcome feedback from our listeners. Stay tuned with the Durian Heat by every Tuesday to Thursday. Same time at 1 to 2 p.m. on GMT Plus 8. Drian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. You're now listening to Drian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing.